Today I'm on Honda's new NX500. They're sort of a low-ish capacity adventure middleweight type bike. It replaces the CB500X, which I absolutely loved. So the question is, is this any better? Stick around and stay tuned. I'll give you my first ride review and let you know. Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here. Hope you're well. Welcome back to the channel. Out and about on what is technically a summer's day now, but you wouldn't know it looking at it, would you? It's quite windy and generally damp and horrible out here. But anyway, needs must and all that sort of thing. So as you heard in the intro, I'm on the NX500. Uh, it's got some changes over the old CB500X, the bike that it replaces. It's, it's pretty much a similar bike in that it's sort of attitude, if you like, and the engine and so on. The primary changes are things like it's got this new TFT display, which I really like actually, more about that later. It's got slightly lighter wheels, it's got a different suspension set up and radically different styling. So before we get into how she rides, let's take a look at that radically different styling, shall we? Okay, here she is then, the NX500 from Honda. Let's take a little look around her at this new styling. As you can see, very sort of upright stance, almost Dakar-esque. I rather like it, I have to say. Uh, let's have a little bit of a closer look at some of the fit and finish on it. It's a nice job with the graphics, I think. Uh, and what they've done is made the front quite wide as well, which really helps with the um, sort of wind protection. So I love this bulbous front end. It's got some nice touches like at the front here. They've got the NX motif underneath the dashboard, which I really like. Uh, let's have a little look around. There's the engine, of course. I like what they've done with those little chrome tops on the uh, on the valve, whatever they are. <laughs> Camshafts is that at the top. And uh, yeah, I think it's a, a pretty good looking bike. Big old grab handles on the back if you're taking a um, pillion passenger on it. Looks nice. Let me just uh, show you the switch gear up close. Uh, dead simple on here. You've got this little blade type thing to select what you want on the uh, on the TFT. If I just bring that TFT to life. We can't really see it in the reflection, but anyway, there we go. TFT, looking good. But really, I was started it up because I wanted to, or turned it on because I wanted to show you the lights. It's got those uh, indicator come running lights on it. it was, I think all Hondas do these days. So they're on all the time. And then you can see the uh, front LED headlight is like that when it's on dip. If we put it onto full beam, then it brings the full stack on there and looks to be lovely and bright. So yeah, there we are. So uh, I certainly think from a styling point of view, they've definitely improved this bike over the outgoing CB500X, which to my mind looked a little bit bulbous. This looks kind of slim and purposeful, doesn't it? It's a good looking bike. Okay, welcome back aboard the bike, folks. And uh, yeah, so much for how she looks then. Definite improvements there, I think, over the CB500X, which I didn't think was a bad looking bike itself. But that's all well and good. How does she ride? Well, initial impressions having just jumped on the bike, very nicely indeed, this engine, Really, really nice. I think it's 497cc parallel twin. We'll uh, go through the specs a little bit later as usual, but um, the engine, bar some tweaking, is pretty much the same as in the CB500X, and it feels much the same to how I remember it. Given it's not a particularly huge engine, I have to say, putting out something like 49 brake horsepower is great on the roads. It's one of those bikes that, you know, you can use to its full extent, and there's that old saying, isn't there, about uh, Riding a smaller bike fast is more fun than riding a big bike slow and all that. Well, I don't know about the speed angle, but certainly using sort of the full capability of the engine is something I really like. And the engine on here is a peach. All right, let's just try my favorite little section of handling road just to see how this new suspension feels. Even though this bike is relatively low powered, I have to say, it's, it's great in real world situations. These are the sorts of roads I like riding on. And you know, I'm doing top legal speeds down here, and it's got loads more to give. It's quite a bumpy road this, but the suspension's soaking up quite nicely. It's quite soft, the suspension on here. You know, I'm jumping out the seat a bit because it is quite soft, but I'd rather it is soft than firm, personally. If this is the sort of bike you're going to use every day for going to work, and a bit of weekend fun, then the suspension suits me in that kind of soft mode. Yeah, very nice, that. More importantly to me is comfort though. That's usually the first thing that I talk about on a bike. And it's the first thing that you notice to when you jump on a bike, isn't it? Well, it's physically, even though it's, you know, a low-ish capacity machine, 
it's incredible isn't it that we talk about a 500 as a low capacity machine but there we are that's where we are these days it's uh, even though it's a low capacity machine it doesn't feel small it's physically quite a big bike now I'm not I say that I'm not a big bloke I'm medium size I'm five foot eight but this doesn't feel like a small bike at all in fact I'm very used to riding things like GS's and uh, this certainly doesn't feel any smaller than the current 1300 GS in terms of what you're looking at at the front. Riding position is very similar as well actually, I'm sat upright, no appreciable lean forward, no weight on my wrists, my legs are uh, basically at a right angle, slightly under so they're slightly tucked up, it's a very comfortable place to be. I'm finding this screen works really well as well, it's only the wind is just touching the top of my helmet at the moment but uh, there's no buffeting, it's nice and clean airflow, which is just as well because that screen actually isn't adjustable. I thought you might be able to grab hold of this and move it, but you can't, that's just there to fix things like sat navs or your phone or whatever too. So that's a nice little touch actually that you can do that. Right, nothing behind me, it's a little bit damp, I'm just gonna try the brakes. Yeah, not too much fork dive actually, and quite some quite nice feel. Let's uh, have another go around the corner here. I do like this engine, it's got just the right amount of character to let you know you're on a motorcycle, you know what I mean? Right, let's try those brakes again, it is wet. Yeah, pretty good, and I didn't notice the uh, the ABS cutting in. I have to say, the rear brake isn't very good. It's one of those ones that you barely notice that it's doing anything at all. So for a bit of trail braking, fair enough, but uh, other than that, it's not brilliant. Yeah, impressed with the sort of wind and weather protection here. It's a windy old day today. But I'm feeling quite cocooned here. I think helped by this quite large tank area here that sort of shelters the bottom of you, which is nice. And as I say, the screen works really well. Loving this new TFT, really clear, really simple. I do find these days some of the more you know expensive top end bikes are just over complicated on the displays. This one straightforward. I've not read the instruction manual, but it's very very easy to use. There's a little button here, uh, a little whoops, touch the horn there by mistake. There's a little uh, button here on the left handlebar. It's like a little blade that moves left and right, and you can press it up and down as well, which controls this. And uh, even without a manual, I've worked out how to do everything on it. You can change the, uh, you can change what the display looks like. You can change the brightnesses, things like that. There's uh, various trips and stuff, but there's nothing complicated. There's no riding modes on this bike. It does, of course, have traction control and ABS. And because it's sort of off-roady looking, you can turn the traction control off. That's what this button is for here on the left. You just sort of hold it up and it turns the traction control off. So very simple bike in terms of its how you use it. So the switch gear, nice and straightforward. Anybody that's ever ridden any motorcycle will immediately be able to use this. You don't have to start st studying manuals to work out how you do stuff. And that to me is a breath of fresh air. Definite improvement over the CB500X with this new uh, TFT. It's really nice and clear that. It's quite small, I think it's only five and a half inches, something like that, but uh, it's all you need. Alrighty, while well, I try and lose this car, let's uh, hop off the bike then. I'll take you through the numbers and the specifications of it. Alright, a very quick whiz through the numbers then, starting off with this engine, 471cc parallel twin, puts out 47 brake horsepower at 8,600 rpm, 43 newton metres of torque at 6,500 rpm. Not super powerful, but ideal for the real world. Basically, it's the same as the one in the CB500X. Brakes at the front, we've got these dual 296mm discs with two pot Nissan calipers, nice pedal discs too. At the rear, we've got a single 240mm disc with a single pot Nissan caliper. Suspension at the front, we've got these uh, Showa upside down uh, separate function big piston forks. And nestled in the rear there, we've got a uh, ProLink uh, mono shock, which is preload adjustable. Seat height on the bike is 830 millimeters, so uh, sort of medium height, I'd say. I can get my feet flat on the deck, no problem at all, at five foot eight with a 32 inch leg. Look at that, I can get my feet flat on the deck, no problem at all. Curb weight of the bike is a lightish 196 kilograms. It certainly feels light when you're riding it. And of course, curb weight means that's with fuel in. So uh, yeah, I suppose it's towards the lighter end of the spectrum, which is always welcome. Tank capacity is a very healthy 17 and a half liters. 
and electronics wise we've already seen that uh, new TFT dash it's got Honda connectivity for your phone if you want that uh, LED lights all around and a 12 volt socket According to the website, the price of the bike, 6,799. I don't think you can argue with that sort of price for this sort of bike. Other stuff I need to tell you, well it has ABS and traction control, of course the traction control you can turn off. Uh, it comes in black, red or white, I think this red is the best one. Uh, you get a centre stand, it's a £150 option. You can get a luggage rack and uh, if you buy the accessories via the Adventure Travel Urban or Comfort Packs, you can save some money there too. Okay folks, welcome back aboard the bike, which I have to say, I'm really enjoying riding. I really like the CB500X as I said earlier and I'm liking this just as much if not more. It feels modern. It feels quite sporty actually. Again, you're not going to go on a track on it obviously. It's not that sort of bike. But for riding around these back lanes it's just perfect. At the end of the day the measure of any bike really, regardless of what the specs say and so on, is is the bike fun to ride isn't it? I have to say this one scores high on the fun quotient. You can chuck it about the corners, ride it with great confidence, it sounds brill, yeah it's a good fun bike this. I'm hoping the microphone picks up a little bit of the engine noise, it's not great this mic at doing so, it's got a really pleasing note that if I drop down a cog or two. Okay so no TMF test would be complete would it without doing my lugging about tests so uh, off to Great Missenden Station car park where I shall simulate moving the bike around in your garage. Let's go find myself a car parking space. Check out the turning circles like and how heavy she is to lift off the stand. I'm anticipating both pretty good but let's find out. Right, right in the middle of this one. Easy to find neutral. Stand's got a big lip on it so that's easy to find as well. Okie dokie. Let's turn her off. There we go. We've got the grab handle. Big seat to put my hand on, even though I've got my dodgy shoulder. I'm anticipating no great issues with this. All right, here we go then. Back we go. Full lock. Easy to get off the centre stand. Side stand, rather. Quite a wide turning circle, actually. Not as tight as I would have hoped. But lovely and light to move around. No problem moving about in your garage. We were in the middle of that one. And we've come all the way. Actually, it's not too bad, to be fair. That's not too bad. Yeah, so I think an easy bike to live with in terms of lugging it about. I think this bike with uh, you know, a roll bag on the back seat, you could have some great fun touring around on this in the summer, as well as using it as your everyday bike. Sometimes simple is best, isn't it? And this is uh, definitely in the simple category. It's just uncomplicated, it's honest. It being a Honda, I imagine the uh, it's going to prove to be very reliable. It seems to be solidly made, well built. Nothing about it that feels cheap. And it is great value when you buy it, a good price. Loving these mirrors by the way, I haven't mentioned them, they're uh, rock solid. They're quite big and I'm getting an excellent view out the back. All the practical stuff on here just seems to work well, you know. It's comfortable. It goes surprisingly well for its low power. Stops well, looks good struggling with this one to find anything I don't like about it. I thought I was going to, you know, before I make these videos I always kind of have a bit of a view of what I'm going to think of a bike and I thought I was going to find this a little bit low powered but that just has not been the case. Gearbox on it works beautifully well, no quick shift or anything like that of course, but the clutch is nice and light. I've had no false neutrals, no trouble finding neutral. It's got a lot going for it this machine, I like it. Yeah, enough power on the bike for cheeky overtakes. And I have to say, even when you're, you know, getting going a bit on these back lanes, the bike feels pretty planted. I like it, the suspension's not getting out of shape. Yeah, handles really nicely. I'm liking this bike a lot. So back to the original question then, is the new bike better than the outgoing bike? Well my resounding answer to that is yes, I love the old bike, there was nothing wrong with that. But this is just taking it again, what was already a good bike and made it even better. I really like the styling of it now, I definitely think it's, uh, it looks a bit sharper now, a bit more modern. The other one looked a little bit kind of bloated and a little bit out of proportion to me. Whereas this looks nothing of the sort, it's almost got a bit of Dakar-esque about it. 
it works really well in terms of weather protection it's got all the comfort you could need and alas I can't find a single thing not to like about the bike I'm not just saying that because I want to keep Honda sweet believe me that is not the case I've got plenty of bike manufacturers I can go to for bike loans but uh, yeah th this is a, a really excellent bike if you're just looking for something that's going to give you no trouble be frugal to own easy to ride and pretty much do anything you could do an awful lot worse than the new for 2024 Honda NX500 so there we go hope that's been of uh, some interest to you and look forward to speaking to you again soon don't forget to hit the uh, subscribe button if you've not done so already and I'll catch you on the next video until then this has been the Mr. and Flyer cheerio Oh, I've just thought of something I don't like about the bike. And this applies to all Hondas, actually. The uh, indicator switch and the horn button are around the wrong way. <laughs> As I say, not specific to the NX500. Small point, I know. But why do Honda do that? Everybody else puts them the other way around. And when you ride other bikes, you always hit the wrong one. So I just went to indicate and I hit the horn. Okay, small point. But I didn't want it to defeat me. I found something I don't like. Or maybe it could do with some heated grips. Okay, there's two things I don't like about the bike.